Good morning everybody and welcome to Friday's Thought for the Day, the last one for this week, uh, last of our studies for this week in the uh, letter of James at the end of the New Testament. I hope you're enjoying this, it's been very challenging this week hasn't it really, exposing our hearts and uh, our sin and, and where they, the effect it has on our tongue and the way that we treat other people and what have you. It's been very difficult sometimes, maybe it's been a hard week for you to, to be uh, following this this, uh, this week. Uh, well, James finishes the week on a positive note, really, and on how, really summing up all of this, the problems we have, uh, making our faith and works work together, living out what we believe, and dealing with the sin in our lives that causes our hearts to be divided. And so we're going to look at that this morning, finish on a, uh, the week on a note of good news. Before we do that, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word to us this week uh, and again Lord we're great to be able to gather around your word this morning and we pray Lord that you'd again speak to us through it in Jesus name Amen. So uh, the last part of uh, well, the middle part verse 7 of James chapter 4 that's where we are and this is what James said he's talked about the God the, the clue is what we've said last week but he gives us yesterday rather he gives us more grace God longs to forgive us for our adultery with the world and he longs to bring us back to himself. That's his whole point, his whole being. And so the key to that, and the way we get back into right relationship with God and deal with all these issues that we've been talking about all week comes now. Submit yourselves then to God, says James. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We need to acknowledge the fact that the source of all of this comes not from heaven, but from hell itself, from the devil. He mentions the devil here. And we need to understand that he's real and he exists and we need to resist him. And how do we resist the devil? Well, we, the best way to resist the devil goes with the first part of the sentence, by submitting ourselves to God. We don't pretend he's not there, but the more we submit ourselves to God and his word and go to the true source of life, as we've been talking about this week, uh, the pure spring water of life, that's when we'll resist the devil. He will help us to resist the devil. And the, the brilliant promise is that if we do submit ourselves to God, resisting the devil, we come near to God and he will come near to you, says, says James. If we come near to God, God is only too willing to come near to us. There's a picture there. Remember the, the uh, parable that Jesus told of the prodigal son who resisted the temptation to eat of the unclean food and all the rest of it and, and recognised his sin, recognised that he needed to do something about it and he, he ran away from the temptations of the world and into the arms of his father and that's the picture here that we resist the devil we submit to God we recognize and confess our sin before him and we um, we turn to God and we as we come near to God he says you know James reminds us that he will come near to us and, but it also we, there's an ongoing need to uh, to put feet if you like to do again actions and words have to match up according to James. So this is what he says, wash your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded. Grieve, mourn and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. In other words, God wants to lift us up but in order to, it's no good just saying we want to submit to God, we submit to God by washing our hands. Of course that's something we've had to do a lot of this last year, more so than ever before. Wash our hands to get rid of the sin. In other words, keep ourselves pure make sure we make the effort to walk to run towards God to to leave the the mess of the of, of the world behind and run towards God isn't it wash our hands you sinners purify our hearts obviously he's not saying we can purify our hearts but the desire must be there to go to God and his word and so there's, a, there's an onus on us but God will do all the work we only have to make a walk a move towards him and he comes and reaches for us doesn't he change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Grieve, mourn and wail for our sin. It goes back to the Beatitudes that Jesus says, those beautiful attitudes in Matthew 5. Blessed are those who mourn. Um, blessed are those who grieve over their sin. Recognise how awful it is. In order to resist the devil, we have to grieve over us. And we don't just have to be sorry for it or be flippant about it. But we have to grieve over it and grieve about its effects in our lives and in the lives of other people that we love as well and we care about. Grieve and mourn over sin and understand how awful it is. It's deadly and it'll take us away from God. And if we do that, then we'll run to him, won't we? Change our laughter to mourning. It doesn't mean to say we can't ever be joyful. 
course we can. But when it comes to our sin, we have to treat it for what it is, the enemy that it really is, and humble ourselves before God, and he will lift you up. And then James finishes characteristically this little section by saying this will then impact the way we treat other people. Brothers and sisters, do not um, slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them then speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but you're sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbour? So this goes back to James's injunctions throughout this, that all of this repentance and faith and grieving and mourning has to affect what we do then, and it will do. And But the danger is that because we're so liable to sin that even in the point of repentance even as we get right with God and we come back to God and he draws near to us we can be like the elder brother in that in that uh, prodigal son story where we're sitting in judgment over our brothers and sisters over others who are sinful and we sit in judgment over them and Jesus and Jesus says uh, in the parable doesn't he to, to the prodigal son uh, to the elder brother that the, the father says you know you've got no right to judge him you, everything I have is yours uh, and your, your, your sin is the fact that your heart is sinful because you're judging other people. Who are you to judge? Only God himself. And so really it's all about, it's a bit like again, thinking of after Jesus is crucified and risen and he meets the disciples on the beach and Peter is reinstated, God forgives him and he's run back to God and he's found the forgiveness, he's found the grace, all the things James has been mentioning here. And then his first thing is, well, what about them? What about John? And Jesus says to him, what concern of, is he to you? Just be, you know, keep yourself in the right place. Worry about your own salvation. You can't deal with them. You can share good with them, but you're not to sit in judgment over them. And that's the truth, isn't it? So we need to be careful how we see other people and love them as Christ loves us. Love your neighbour as yourself. Going back to that, uh, that greatest commandment, isn't it? To love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And that means submitting ourselves to him, turning to God and allow him to turn, resisting the devil and allow him to come towards us. And the promise is as we resist the devil, he will flee and God will become nearer. And then love our neighbour as ourselves. Go and love our neighbour as in the same way that we love God, in the same way that we've received mercy from God, we show mercy to others as well. And we don't judge, but we allow God to deal with them in the same way graciously as he's dealt with us. So it's a good message to finish off this week, isn't it really? That God has a remedy for all of this that we've been talking about all week. All of our, our divided hearts, all of our impure speech, all of our thoughts and things that don't tie up with our faith. God says, all you need to do is resist them, resist them. You, don't, you, don't, you can't conquer them. Don't try and beat them, resist them and run to me and I'll lift you up. You know, the, uh, those who are humble will be lifted up in due time. What a great promise for us as we go into this weekend. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us this week and particularly today, Lord, as we thank you for the remedy for sin as it's always been that we resist the devil and we run to you. And we do that again this morning, Lord, and thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love that pours out in our hearts. Lord, we thank you that as we humble ourselves before you, it might seem crazy to the world, but we know, Lord, only you are the one who can lift us up and exalt us. Help us, Lord, to then take that out in the way we treat other people as well, and not to sit in judgment on people, but to be gracious towards them as you are gracious towards us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.